everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are kicking off the Cursed City set. Yes, we are finally doing this. Despite all the controversy that's been surrounding this set, I thought it'd be great fun to show you how to do this. There's a lot of techniques that we can cover in this set that you can use across lots and lots of other min miniatures that may come out in the future or currently that you have in your collections. So, without further ado, we're going to get into it and we're going to start painting this guy, Jelson Darok. Yep, that's his name. Got it here in front of me. Now, the first thing to note is that he has been primed with grey here, And the colour that we're going to be using first is Skeleton Horde. And what we're going to be doing with the Skeleton Horde is we're going to be painting this all over the inside and outside of his cloak and coat and his hat as well. Because this is a really nice kind of dark, warm brown. So what we want to do is we just want to start getting this skeleton horde all over these details, just like this. Now the reason we're doing it on both the inside and the outside is because the inside is this kind of colour, although albeit a little bit darker, whereas the outside is a really lovely kind of dark brown. But we want to do this as our pre-shade because if we just go straight in with the brown, it's not going to come to the same kind of depth that we're going to want. So we're doing Skeleton Horde all over first, just like so. And we're just going to start doing the outside too. We want us to try and get this as nice and smooth as possible by just using these big broad brush strokes. Just using the brush to mop up any excess where there's too much. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly two parts wildwood to one part black templar and just a spot of contrast medium, maybe one brushful, just to help things along. We're going to use that mix over the top of our dark leather on the outside of his cloak and his hat. So what we just want to do is just want to start painting this all over the top of that skeleton hoard that we've already finished. Just like this. And so with that done, what we now want to do is just use some regular wild wood on its own. We want to use this for the rest of his red leather belts and things. So we've got this area here. So with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some thin and gorthal brown and we'll use this to highlight his hat and his coat. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some bane blade brown and we'll use this as a little spot highlight on the coat and hat. Just picking out the sharp edges. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to just move on to those belts and things. And the colour that we're going to use to highlight this is Scrag Brown. And with that done, what we're now going to do is take some Death Claw Brown. I'm going to use this as a little spot highlight. Just 
just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to focus on all the black cloth details. This is important because there is a couple of different styles of black on here, same as there's a couple of different styles of brown. So the black cloth that we're talking about are the gloves, the boots, and his pants, trousers, <laughs> not just his pants. So the color that we're going to be using for this first is Ultramarine's Blue. This is going to act as our pre-shade. So what we just want to do is just want to get this all over all the areas that we want to be black. Just like this. We just want to avoid the strap holding the leg groove. And with that done, what we now want to do is take some pterodon turquoise and we want to use this on our remaining black details. And these are going to be areas like the handle and the scabbard down here, the sword handle and the frame of the rifle. And this is again acting as our pre-shade shade for our Black Templar. It will just give us a very different looking black. And with that done, what we then do is take some black Templar and we coat this over the top. Both those colours. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to just paint in the last of our brown wooden leather details. And the colour we're going to be using for that is Saigor Brown. So we've just got this strap up here, for example. We've got the handle of the Nice. And next up we're going to use some Blood Angels Red and this is going to be for our red leather details. So these are going to include the little straps that are holding up his stakes. as well as the large sword scabbard on the back here. With that Blood Angels red applied, what we're then going to do is take some Dark Oath Flash. I'm going to paint this over the top. Of the Blood Angels Red. And with that done, what we're then going to do is make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm going to use this to paint in our wooden stakes. And with that done, still continuing with doing all the base coats, what we're going to do now. So we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the silver details. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Rune Lord brass. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the remaining metallics and any areas that you want to be slightly more ornate. So 
just like this. So with that done, we've just got one base coat left to do, which we're just gonna do, and that's gonna be his face. And the color that we're gonna use is Dark Oath Flesh. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take a small amount of this, not too much, because it, you don't wanna kinda of just put a big blob in there because it becomes difficult to remove it because it is so kind of tricky to get to. So what we do is we just take that Dark Oath Flesh, just basically wanna fill in his facial features So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of those metallics and the colour that we're going to be using is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black templar. What we're going to do is just take that on our brush, just pick an area to start. So I'm just going to start down here on his leg grieve. I'm just going to start painting this all over. So we are going to be doing all the metallics with this, so we also want to shade the areas that we did with the Rune Lord Brass. And so with that done, we have one more shade to apply, and that is going to be a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm going to use this on that interior of his cloak. And so with that done, it's now time to start adding some highlights and we're going to start with the wooden stakes. And the colour that we're going to be using for this is Pallid Witch Brush. And with that done, we're now going to use some more gassed bone to highlight the interior of our cloak. And with that done, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to add this as a little spot highlight over the top of our more gassed bone, bone, uh, our more gassed bone highlights. And with that done, we're going to take some rust grey and we're going to highlight our black details. And we want to do this across both the colours of black. But the spot highlight is going to be the thing that distinguishes them. So with that done, just on the soft details, so the gloves, the boots and the trousers, we're going to add a spot highlight of Fenrisian grey. And with that done, we're then going to use a tiny amount of Gorse Blaster Green. We're going to use this to highlight all of our hard details that we originally did with Pteranon Turquoise. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on those silver armour plates, not the hammer or the gun. We're just going to do those slightly differently. At least this step isn't going to be present on them. And what we are doing is we're taking some iron warriors and we're thinning it down with a lot of water, like three or four parts water, so it becomes this really, really thin metallic glaze. So if you see on my thumb, it kind of looks like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this over the top of the flat areas of our armor panels. So let's just add a little bit of shade into them. We want them to still be quite dark. Did I say shade? I meant shine. <laughs> so 
just like this, just onto the flats of the armor panels. Just avoiding those recesses. So for example, down here on the leg groove, we want to do it here and here. And then where it kind of concaves in, just want to skip that a little bit. Just add some of this mix just there on the flat. So I'm going to be just in there. And like I said, this is just for those armor panels. We don't need to do this on the rest of the silver details. With that shininess now added back into those armor panels, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some thin down iron hand steel and we're going to use this to highlight all of the silver, including the armor panels. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some canoptic alloy and we're going to use this to highlight all of our Rune Lord brass areas. Just like this. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Mornfang Brown and we're going to use this to highlight the strap of the rifle. We're also going to use it to highlight the handle of the mace. And so with that Mornfang brown applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some Karak stone and we're going to add a little bit of a wood graining effect to that handle of the mace. And the way we're going to do this is first by drawing lots and lots of little lines going down the length of the handle. Like so. And you can keep building that up until you get it looking how you want. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some kids left flesh and we're going to use this to highlight his face. And with that done, what we're then going to do is take some flayed one flesh. I'm going to add this to the sharpest features. On his face. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take a tiny amount of wildwood. Really small. Just on the tip of our brush, I'm going to add this to the underside of his eye. And next up, we're going to use a teeny tiny amount of Screaming Skull to colour in the white of his eyeball. Just like that. And lastly, just to finish off that face, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny amount of Black Templar and add this as a dot for his pupil. And so with that done, Jalson Darak is now finished and he looks pretty damn awesome. So what we're gonna do now is gonna work on that base. And the color that we're gonna be using first is Basilicanum Gray. And we're gonna be using this for all that stonework that he is standing on. And with that done, what we're now going to do is finish off the rest of the base by using a couple of different materials. So firstly, we've got some Astro Granite debris, which I'm now covering the name of. There we go. We've also got this tub of very ancient modelling gravel. But you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. It's just very fine little gravel like that. And we've also got this pack of static flock. So what we're going to do is we're just going to 
Firstly, take some Astro Granite Debris on our texture spreader. I'm just going to apply this to all that negative space where there isn't any sculpted detail, like those rocks, for example. Just like that. And then, whilst it's still wet, I'm going to grab some tweezers. I'm going to grab a little bit of this gravel. I'm just going to drop it in. Helps if you don't miss the base. Like so. We're also going to use the tweezers. Just grab a tiny little bit of static grass, like that much. I'm just going to drop that in as well. And grab a little tiny bit more. Like so. You just want to go all over the base like this. And we'll come back. And with that all done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Basilicanum Grey over the top of our Astro Granite Debris. And our gravel. Just to darken it down. And with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to give that base a very light dry brush. Of tyrant skull. Just catching a detail like those paving slabs there, the astrogranite debris, and the gravel. And so, with that done, all that's left to do is to paint in the rim of the base, and I'm going to be using Corvus Black. Forgot to leave it in shot. <laughs> I've got some thin down on my palette. I'm just going to start painting this all over the rim like that. You of course can do any colour that you want. I'm a sucker for a classic. And with that done, Jelson Darrock is now finished, ready to descend into the cursed city of Ulfen Khan. Get it? Cursed city? <laughs> yes, he's ready to slay zombies, skeletons, and any other foul undead denizens of that cursed place. And it was a lot of fun to do. There's a lot of brown going on here, and it's a real challenge to kind of use the contrast paints to, one, retain the same tone without it all being the same colour. And I think we've done a spectacular job, particularly on the black back there with the mace handle, the backpack and his coat, all different tones of brown, but using pretty much Wildwood and Saigor brown and various different highlights. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.